Hey everybody, how's it going? This is of course BMS, and I figured for my next project I'd do something that's totally hardcore, which just happens to be Contra Hardcore. Also, the next person I hear that pronounces this as Hardcorpse, which 90% of those playing this for the internet have done, I swear I'm gonna knock them upside their heads with my Oxford Family Dictionary. It's a pun, you illiterate fucks. Quite a clever one at that. <clears throat> anyway, back to business here. Contra Hardcore was released for the Sega Genesis all the way back in 94, and most definitely lives up to its little play on words, as popular opinion would list this as the most difficult of the Contra series. Anywho, let's dive into it. There are four playable characters, and I'm going to be alternating between them throughout the stages so as to show them all off. Each have their own set of weapons, and a couple have some really cheap abilities. Not going to use any names, though. <coughs> Brownie the Robot. But yeah. And now it's time for a segment I like to call, What Would You Do? Situation. There's an unmanned robot running around terrorizing the city. Do you, A, run away like a wussy, Are you wussy? B, attempt to reason with the robot in hopes of a peaceful solution, okay. or C, Jump in your urban assault vehicle, ram through the enemy's front lines, proceed to blow shit up. If you picked C, then you, friend, are ready to join the hardcore. Thanks for playing What Would You Do? Until next time. Okay, back into things here. Let's do this. I'm pumped. Wait a minute. Freeze! You mean to tell me that our little vehicle crashed through a number of enemy infantry, smashed a giant enemy mech, but was stopped by what appears to be a broken-down Volkswagen. Interesting. I guess all I can say to that is Das Auto, bitches. Oh well, best not to dwell on that. Time to carry on. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, Contra Hardcore is one of the hardest, if not the hardest, in the series. But in addition to the added difficulty, it also brought a ton of new gameplay mechanics to the table. At least at the time. Of course, four playable characters with their own minor strengths and weaknesses. But the major change is the weapon system. If you'll notice at the top of the screen, you have the A, B, C, and D slots. Each character has a specific weapon that you collect that fits into those slots. Of course, they all start out with a normal gun, but that's too weak to do any real damage. Oh no, it's a minute boss. A very, very easy minute boss. A great opportunity to show off yet another unique skill to the hardcore. The slide. I shit you not, the most useful maneuver in the game. While you're sliding, it makes you invincible to like 99% of the things in this game that could kill you. But like all temporary invincibility moves, there's a small catch. There's a short delay after you finish sliding where you can't move and are vulnerable. Not a big problem though, just pay attention to what you're doing. Uh, also, it should be noted that each character has a different length that they can slide. Ray and Sheena are basically your middle of the road group, medium length slide, the selection of weapons that are both strong and versatile with Ray here leaning more towards the versatile side. But of course, here we have another very easy mini-boss. Only two attacks, just stay in the center and you can avoid his little laser explosions there. And the other one that he didn't use is where he'll pick up a car and throw it at you. Just slide to avoid. With that out of the way, we can pick up Ray's B and C weapons here, the crash and spread guns respectively, both Contra classics. Although the spread gun has been significantly nerfed in terms of power for this game, as with most of the later Contra incarnations. Regardless, we can now move on to the main boss for this level, the unmanned robot that is really not unmanned, but rather, now get this, man, spiffy, right? Now this guy has two forms. First up, he just jumps around and fires his little gun at you. Easy as hell to avoid, especially if you use the slide. His second form, while still easy, is a little tricky because he'll sometimes throw in a little dash attack that if you're too close to him, you won't have time to avoid, even if you try to slide. Regardless, he goes down without much of a fight. And there you have it. The invulnerable slide makes quick work out of this robotic wussy. Now back in the day, this was one of the new features that took place in the Contra series. A moderately detailed in-game story. But wait, that's not all. Included in this game was the ability to pick multiple paths, which would affect the outcome of the story. Spiffy, right? 
Of course it is. But alas, we've reached the end of our road, so let me explain how this is going to work. Ray and Brownie the robot are going to chase after Necro Ocular Joe here, while Sheena and Fang are going to save the research center and follow that story arc. Capiche? No? Don't understand? Well, that's okay. It's just a simple way of keeping track of which story choices have been made for each character as the game progresses, as there are four main endings, one for each character, which we will be getting. So go ahead and click the little annotation leading to the path you want to take. Or, if you're very bored with some time to kill, watch them both. It's all good. Anyway, see you next time for Stage 2A slash B and Stage 2C slash D. Peace out, people. Thank you.